Hello and welcome back to Pandemic Playground with Dave. We are back with Surviving as a Trader Season 2. And we're going to do it in space this time around, but with a twist. So let's get started. Alright, so instead of building from when we started off and finished off in Mars, where we were planning to make a mobile base, fly around in space, blah, blah, blah. Decided to just start over instead. <laughs> makes a little more sense that way well not really <laughs> it just makes it a little more difficult that way i should say to do a surviving the trader in space and initially we're going to start off with the space pod which is this vehicle here and obviously we get edit it upgrade it whatever we need to it as soon as possible because it has a decent amount of stuff like it has the iron thrusters in all directions gyroscope um cargo containers and all that um oxygen hydrogen engine i should say and o2h2 generated with a little bit of ice so not too bad so yeah we're starting over in this case but the twist is we added a lot of npcs into this <laughs> Last time in surviving as a trader in Mars, we only had the abandoned settlement and the module encounter spawner in that sense. But this time we loaded up with a bunch of things. So let's just go check out what's in the mod list here. All right, so this is our current mod list for this scenario or series. We're going to play with abandoned settlements, AI enabled, build vision, crew enabled, easy inventory, female character variety, GPS distance helper. Ember Corporation, which is or used to be air traffic control or air traffic independent contractors also used to be formerly Reddit custom encounter mail character variety, no suits, owed astronauts, parallax, which used to be surface occupation, reverse text HUD API, trade operation coalition, NPC weapon upgrades, protractly perturbed pirates. MEC module encountering system, MPC program extender, MPC defense shields, and defense shields. So initially, this is probably going to be the worst part, <laughs> especially in the beginning. But since I'm going to add shields for myself, I might as well just give it to the MPC too. So that's the mod list, and hopefully it all works out okay. Haven't really tested it yet until now, so. Let's see how it works. In terms of the advanced options, we bumped up the character inventory size. It just makes it easier for recording purposes. Instead of running back and forth, back and forth from your cargo to your backpack and things like that. So we just do that. Everything else we left alone, got rid of the total PCU or block limits and enabled spectator mode, enabled in-game scripts. Got rid of cargo ships because the MEC will do that for us. Random counters got rid of that as well. The MEC will take care of that as well. Very importantly, we are taking out third person view to make these even harder. So we have to force ourselves to use cameras if you want to see third person view and things like that. And I didn't put the camera panning mod either. So it makes it even worse. <laughs> Everything else we left alone except for enable progression because I do not want to deal with progression in this scenario, especially in the beginning. And lastly, got rid of auto respawn. I like to respawn, pick my respawn points and not just automatically respawn to places. So that's the mod list. That's the advanced settings. Let's get to it. All right, we're loaded up with all the mods. Everything seems stable and everything like that. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty sure if I don't move too far, nothing's going to spawn. So that's a good thing. So we could redesign the ship if we want to. Let's get the initial bottles first. And then we could check out what's in our seat. And it seems like that's it. I actually thought there would be a data pad there with some notes. <laughs> um, so we could go find an economy base. So that doesn't seem like it's going to happen. But that's interesting. <laughs> so that means... We're going to have to find one randomly somehow. The idea was to go to the economy base and do some contracts for some money, space credits. Because we only got 10,000 to start with. And 
kind of trade from there. That doesn't look like it's going to be possible now, does it? <laughs> All right, so there's no data pads here, so pretty much screwed from the start. What we can do is quickly turn this into a small grid if we wanted to, but I doubt I kind of would want to do that. So we could edit this mess a little bit more if we wanted to. Um, not exactly sure how I could do that without kind of breaking a lot of stuff. Maybe we leave it alone for now and start doing some traveling first to kind of see if we can find something that we can s either scavenge or do some trading or whatever the case may be. And got to mention also, of course, we're going to continue like season one, no drilling whatsoever. So that is what we're going to do. All right. So no third person view. So obviously that's going to be something I'm going to get used to because I'm going to have to fly it this way. And that's an NPC as well. That's three kilometers away. I think it's slightly coming close to me, but it's just a transport ship, not friendly to us. So we definitely got to be careful. Now, the problem is there's no data pads. I thought there would be a data pad in here. So how we're going to find anything is pretty, pretty questionable. <laughs> I mean, can I fly towards this ship? Yes. Would that would that be a good idea? Probably not because they're going to shoot me down if it has weapons. Um, Unless I get close with them and then, you know, Kind of respawn off the survival kit and everything like that, but kind of don't want to do that, obviously. So I don't know how we're going to find our first economy base here because that is our lifeline, basically. We may be able to run into those Mayday stations so then we can take a look and see what those might have and start um, salvaging stuff from it. But then again, we still need to go to an economy base too to start trading stuff. So we just got to find our first economy base, which is going to be a bit rough to do. All right, something just spawned and it's a, an assault Corvette. Definitely something we don't want to mess with. So we're going to keep flying in one direction and hopefully um, we'll be okay. I mean, one thing we could do is fly close to a moon. That usually would be pretty good. All right, what is going on? So I'm being kicked out of the space here. <laughs> I am leaving, so don't worry. <laughs> I'm at least t almost 10 kilometers away from you. You don't have to hail me and start threatening me. We're, we're not ready to battle anytime soon. So I am not something you need to be worried about. <laughs> All right, so I think what I'm going to do is fly close to the moon or Earth in this case or Earth life. Why? Because usually near the atmosphere of the moon or planet does have an economy base from my experience. So we're going to probably do that. And I realized without third person view, I won't be able to do any quick time lapses to speed things up on a flying perspective and see it on, on the ship side and everything like that. So I guess we're just going to look at it from a first person viewpoint and go time lapse if we need to, especially with these traveling sessions. We just ran into us on those signals that gave us a little bit more credits that we could use and also salvage some of the parts there. So we now have about 18 
thousand space credits, which is not much at all. All right, so let's head to the moon. And again, the reason why we're heading to the moon is because usually somewhere around the moon would be an economy base. We're going to fly around saving our power with dampeners off. As you see in the bottom right, you have nine days worth of power without the hydrogen engine turned on, which is awesome. So it looks like we're just going to roam around space for a bit, looking for stuff and looking for enemies. In this case, we have the Parallax Oban Tide Mark II, which is a, a pretty big ship, I would um, imagine. I can't do anything with those ships. Once I get close, I'm probably going to get shot down easily. So I'm going to try my best to avoid those ships for the time being. Once I get more situated, which could be episodes, episodes down the line, I might go ahead and attack them. And attack them strategically <laughs> without getting myself destroyed as well. So this is quite the distance to fly to, obviously. But we're going to keep on trucking and see what we can find. I mean, the best thing to do is travel at this point. But the problem is that it's going to spawn extra stuff. Um, but I am hoping and hoping to find an economy base fairly soon. Should have thrown away my drill. Actually, it's still in my inventory, I believe. Yeah, it is. I'm going to toss that out. Ooh, where did I just toss that to? <laughs> Alright, so while we're flying this thing, we're going to kind of test to see what's up with the ship itself and there's my drill i don't know how i got over there but okay we just let it kind of actually you know what there we go no drilling <laughs> we'll see that uh never actually <laughs> so i really don't like this space pod based on the, the way it's built like that but not much we can do about it and hmm i honestly rather get this closer and put the door over here instead to be honest it, it just fits a little bit better this way so we could get rid of these cover walls i think yeah that works fine and these And we could put a panel up over here. I'm not going to put it that way. We got to put it in the outside like that. I would prefer to be that specific. Um, is there something blocking it or is it just not allowing me to do so? Probably have to build it like that down. Or... Could add a small little panel right over here. Like this. And that should work too. This one will change out to be maybe this one. Or you know what? Maybe we just do this. I think we just do this. Yeah. And this one. I'm hoping nothing's going to fall out when I do this. <laughs> it's going to be that. And then with that done, we could do a half lock here instead of a panel. And we should be good. That closes up the ship a little bit, which I would prefer. Something is lit up over there. It's probably one of those mayday things. And we are still super, super far away. Um, going towards a mayday thing might be not a smart idea because it can have a drone. So I'm not going to go there just yet. So from here, we're going to knock out a door. And 
And it looks like we're going to have to do some kind of offset door over here. And also, this is going to have to change out as well. So, we do this. And we can put a decent door over here. So, we can do that for now. do I think an offset door like so yeah we'll do an offset door we connect it from the inside can we even do it from the inside um, we could we just gotta get rid of this light there we go I would probably prefer it to be an inside, but it's a bit of a small corridor to kind of walk through. <laughs> so maybe we stick it on the outside. All right. Maybe we should have got rid of that light because <laughs> we now need something to see. And I don't know what our course is in front of us, but, but hopefully we're not going to run into an asteroid or something like that. Um, we're fairly close to one, but Scipio, right? All right. So from here, we're probably going to have to put in something as well and we're out of steel blocks already so that's not gonna work out <laughs> I'm gonna take this block off put in a new one and we don't have enough so that is a stinker that's no good is that enough to hold pressurization? No, it's not because this is not done. All right, so we need to start stealing a little bit of steel plate <laughs> from our current stash. Like so. And we get that done. Are we pressurized? No, we're not. All right, so... It's likely because this gap over here. So we got to fill that gap in somehow. Eventually. Um, if we built everything on the outside. Then we could probably just throw in a panel or two. Like this. Like that. And like that. But once again we're out of materials. Um... And it's not like we can find any new materials anytime soon. So we're going to have to steal some more. From probably back here. I mean we don't need this. So let's sacrifice that for now. And this. Although this is minimal minimal parts right there. Um, we're going to end up stripping this thing pretty naked really, really soon. I would think. Okay, so we put panels, panels, and panel. Close the door. And we're pressurized. Perfect. So that kind of helps a bit. But I'm surprised that this is actually working out okay without this actually having some kind of seal. Um, and ideally, I was just going to put a block like this. But we have no mats whatsoever. So I'm just going to borrow some from each side, I guess. We just put a panel instead. And that should be a lot less mats. Where's the half panel? There. Perfect. Three steel plates. That's all we need. And that will kind of cover all that so it doesn't look too nonsense-like. Alright, we're getting a little bit closer to the moon, which is great. And once again, not much has happened so far still what don't we need and what do we need i don't know i mean right now the ship is operational it's not too bad 
Um, looks like the survival kit is connected to this piece of conveyors into the O2H2 and everything like that, which is okay. All the flying bits, which is the um, thrusters and everything, are all located here. Isn't too bad. I mean, I prefer to kind of stick it a little bit closer, not make this long neck, but it looks okay. It works okay. So let's kind of stick with it. Let's continue flying and see what we come up with in terms of a base or two or something. If if another melee piece pops up, I probably am going to just head towards it just to get something going. <laughs> Ah, looks like we got a beacon, but I don't know if that's in the moon or not, but we can kind of get close to sea, and that might actually be on the moon, so that's going to be a problem, because I don't know if I'm able to fly into the moon and get out, because the moon does have a little bit of gravity, and all we're working with is ion thrusters, so that's probably not going to be ideal. So, we're going to float around it, let's just see... If it is on the surface, if it's on the surface, we'll just fly around the moon a little bit. And if we can't find anything, then I guess that's what we're going to stick with. <laughs> Hopefully not. Because, again, I don't know if I can even land in the moon or not at this point. Alright, so this is actually looking up. So, this doesn't seem to be part of the surface as I see the bubble already and that's outside of the surface. And looks like we got an unmarked beacon. No, UNMK, not unmarked beacon. It looks like it says unmarked, but that's a spot we can go to as well. So, it's looking good now because we got some economy bases going on. And this one, I think we could GPS marker it, right? Nope, we have to get close to it. So, let's just wait for that to happen. We should be relatively close to this. And we're probably not going to have to crash into it. But if we could, because it's a safety zone. Or a safe zone. And let's check it out. This should be a proper economy base. Not like that train station that we saw before. And I'm actually a little surprised that NPCs are not here usually this should be out here I mean it's been a while since I looked at any of the mods I just kind of threw them all in <laughs> to see what it looks like so we can and probably have to fix some of it uh, later down the line but all right we're landed we're gonna spend a little energy just floating around but we do we have our money on here no we don't let me get my money <laughs> all right so we don't necessarily use, need to use atm obviously and that's because we use the store from what we learned last time all right so we got that there all right here's the store we could deposit our money here so 8606 deposit now we got 18 grand Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> This is great, but it doesn't help with the trading aspect because I can't afford any of these is one thing, but it would be a nice upgrade that so we could always sell a lot of these things here. That's also good. Um, steel plates, interior plates right there. So it looks like. 160 per unit, so that's going to net us a little bit of money. Are we desperate for money? I mean, we can strip our ship as much as we can and start selling it and hopefully buy a new ship. <laughs> I mean, the, mo the, the minimal ship is about a mil, I think. Yeah, and they're all small grade, which is the biggest problem. The, the one million ones. The bigger ones like this, the freighter, nice to have. But probably going to be a while until I get that ass get that out. Uh, we'll look at the contracts in a sec. Oh, there you go. We have friends. <laughs> this is what I meant. NPCs. Some fun little NPCs that just sit here do absolutely nothing. 
but it's just fun to have them sit there. I mean, if there's an actual base, yes, they'll probably attack us. <laughs> if they if we're not friendly. Oh, that's a toilet. Luckily, nobody was in there. <laughs> Can get in there. Alright, we're gonna explore the base a little bit. And the reason why we're gonna do that is because we can steal or quietly loot some things. Especially some possible credits or loose change, I usually call it, in the beds. So nothing there and I think we're just gonna head over to the control station over here so this is not something we can possibly do nope all right so I think that's it so it's only a two bed station unfortunately not much we can steal or take what's down here oh a whole bunch of randomness Yeah, nothing, nothing worth noting. <laughs> Alright, so let's look at the contract then. So nothing much else is left. I mean, I don't think there's any change in the seats, but you never know. Nope, nothing. Alright, so here's a vending machine with cola and things like that. We're not going to worry about that. Alright, contracts. Right off the bat, you got some repair contracts, acquisitions, escort contracts as well, which we can't do any of them hauling we do but we probably want to do with a jump jet or jump drives but we could do a bunch of search contracts that we can do for sure and that's what's going to net us some money all right so acquisition wow <laughs> they want some expensive stuff that right off the bat we can't afford all right so we could start off with some search missions which what we can do is kind of, kind of take the risk of taking all four and hopefully it doesn't make us go too, too far away for them. Um, but that's probably the easier way. We're probably going to end up losing one maybe. But I think we've done like a total of 10 before and not have a problem. So let's just take them. And hope for the best. <laughs> Alright, off we go. Let's see. We got all the markers here. The furthest one away is this one. So if we go... Well, actually the furthest one is this one. But that's the same, all in the same direction. We could come back to this one a little bit later if we want to. Let's go... This one first. And then we'll make our way to the 14, back to 11, and then back to the other one. I think that should be more than enough timing. Um, let's just say... Let's start the timer and now. Alright, about two kilometers away. And I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to detect it with our cockpit. Yep, it's right there. <laughs> so we just need to head right over here. To get our loot. Or find the ship. And I think the deviation was what? Um, 750 meters. So that's about 750 meters. That's not too bad. So here's that ship on the last known ship. Oh, we just flew right by and not crashed into it. Luckily. All right, so let's go to this one because this one seems to be a little bit closer. Then we'll go loop to the right. Right over here. And then loop back over there. And then we should be able to collect all our cash. So we just collected, I think, 40 or 55. Uh, I think we're getting around, four, that was the 44 one, probably. So we're getting there. So we do have to go to UNMC, the UNMK, the unmarked, <laughs> and eventually see what that's, that's all about. Which, it's ending in MK, so it might actually be another ship selling station. I, I really think it is, though. But we have two to bounce around to do some contracts, if anything. That's going to help out. Uh, we should look at the store for some data pads. But usually data pads end up giving you economy bases that are really, really far. So it's not going to be an easy task to do that. But we could always gamble it and test our luck in that sense. But yeah, search contracts has been a lot easier since the upgrade where we can aim for these 
kind of content and ships and drones or whatever the case is so that is easy money easy easy money all right so that's spotted and oh it jumps away i did not know that that's cool oh wow <laughs> All right, just waste a few seconds there, but <laughs> it's all right. On to the next one. And I think we only spent about three minutes so far. So three minutes. And now we got 118,000 space credits. We're on our way to a long journey. <laughs> Yeah, so from what I remember, actually, just before we do that, let's slow down a little bit. And get to the ship right over here. Here we go. And that's going to jump away as well. Oop. It kind of crashed into it. <laughs> so that's spinning a bit around. Wasn't expected to do that, but whoops. But yeah, it just jumped away from it. Alright, so we're 14 away from this one, so that's not too bad. That should be another... Maybe, at most, 5 minutes. <laughs> Probably less. So that's gonna net us some good money there. Um, yeah, but anyways, like I say, if it ends in... The last two letters is the indication of what that economy base is. So if the MTMK was a ship selling base, I'm pretty sure the UNMK is gonna be another ship selling base. The only good news is that they're about six kilometers away or so. So I can just bounce around from the two and do some contracts that way to get extra cash as fast as possible. I mean, by the time I get back to the MTMK base, there probably is another more search contracts. But if, if it, there isn't, then we can go to the other one. So that's the benefit of having the close economy bases there. But... We do need an economy base that sells components and or a mining economy base. So then that way we can start building a refinery, assembler and everything like that on the ship. So we can start more refinery than anything else. Um, so we can buy ores, refine them and sell them back out as we did before. So then that way we have materials to build stuff and everything like that. So, and it doesn't seem like things have been spawning and attacking us too. So, good thing and a bad thing. <laughs> Did it break? Possibly. I'm not sure. Let's see how it goes. I mean, we're not even ready for being attacked anyway. So, it's okay that, you know, things aren't really working as expected. I mean, it would be hectic if we just get things attacking us right away. So, let's just see what happens. I know we have Reavers on here, so we should maybe run into some boss encounters, I think. But I think that is based on how high we are in the totem pole of having weapons. So basically, it counts your level of um, threat, I think it is, for it to work. I mean, I'm not that that sure but i remember that's what it was i tested npcs a while back and it definitely has been a while so i'm not sure exactly all the terminology and everything like that but i think that is the case oop that's not good <laughs> ouch ouch we lost the whole front, so now we're not going to be in good shape in terms of... Huh. <laughs> this is not good at all. Alright, what does it take to make a cockpit? Um, so basically, steel plates and this. So, take this off, unfortunately. <laughs> Take these off. Um, 
basically don't need a door anymore. <laughs> we don't need an air vent. So pretty much forced myself to use a regular old cockpit in this case. I really want to move the survival kit and I don't know how I'm going to move that. I might move it here. And face it that way. So taking this apart. We will put the survival kit that way. So we could go this way, but I think I want to do it that way. And I don't have any connections here. Mm, unless we do the industrial cockpit, which we can't do because it takes metal grids. So we're stuck with the original cockpit in this case. Yeah, we're stuck with the original cockpit. And the port is on the bottom. So we do need a something down here to connect if we want to do it that way but um i don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon so we're just gonna keep it as that then all right let's fix this right here let's throw in a cockpit right here and looks like we're missing a little bit of displays so that's not good um, <laughs> that's really not good. All right, just one display on the door. Do we have anything in here? No. Okay. This is not good. Okay, we need to find displays. Displays. I don't think there's any displays at any of these things. Um, shoot. This is not good. We just need three displays, but it takes iron and silicone, which we don't have right now. So, not good. So, we can't even make this cockpit. So we're going to have to work with something else such as a helm, I guess. Hopefully I have the parts for it. Okay, that works out. Um, What are we going to do about this whole other situation? <laughs> a... All right, so what we can do, <laughs> maybe, um, how much does it cost for any of these things? A lot of bulletproof glass, which we don't have. We destroyed a big portion of glass. So that's the problem. But maybe we just add this one sheet of window. Maybe. Probably not. Eh, we probably could, actually. Not too bad. We could add the one sheet of window right here. And unfortunately, we're going to have to panel up this with regular panels. <laughs> and that is how we're going to secure ourselves to be pressurized, I guess. But the problem now is... I can't get back there because this is in my way. Um, we could put the door here. Yeah, we could definitely do that. We could put a door here. And it's going to be an offset door in this case. 
Ooh, that looked terrible. Can we use any other door? Nope. That's that's just bad news. All right, we put the door here, and we gotta get moving because that thing's getting a little close. Um, why can't I put a door here? What is in here that is preventing me from putting a door? I have no idea. Um, I hope that's not coming for me. <laughs> Not able to put a whole thing there, and oop, there's my ammo. So I think this some stuff stuck somewhere. I think. Well, let's just take these out. See what's going on. I don't see anything here, so I'm not sure. Why can't I build anything here? That's so weird. Oh, is that it? Um. All right, there's definitely something um, hanging around somewhere. Uh, it's probably some parts I may have just lost by doing that. I think it's came from the survival it. Uh, that's definitely not a good sign, but oh well, in this case. Oh, you know what? It may have well just be that this piece is kind of floating. Yeah, because you can't just plop it on there. So how did how's how's this plopped on here? Oh, um. Okay, so we just put a door here first. Yeah, I think that thing up there was a problem. Actually, we can put an offset door here. Or we put it the lining door this way. I think we can do the sliding door this way instead. And open this up. And that should be okay. <laughs> Hopefully. All right, we got a door. Perfect. Um, we did get rid of the air vent, so that doesn't help us out. Oop. Um, we could put it back, I think. Do we have enough for an air vent? Probably not. Steel plates, construction component, motors. Which we probably... Ran out of. Yeah, no steel plates. We have motors. But yeah. The, that was fun. <laughs> Crashing right into what we were looking for. And <laughs> just, just causing a big old mess. So instead of panels, I could do the catwalks, I think. That uses construction components in small steel tubes which we have a bunch of yeah i think we should use the catwalk instead to save on some mat so we'll take this off <clears throat> which we really don't which we don't really need all this anyways but Sure. We'll just cover it up just in case. We'll put the catwalk, which is pretty much the original panels way back then. Okay, so that's looking good. Oh, forgot about this. Um, we have enough to put another catwalk. Nope, we're missing one interior <laughs> plate. That's not good. I mean, we could take it from this. We don't need this. And we're going to take from this. Ooh, I am out of energy. So that's not good. Alright, so we can flip this thing around now. If we want to be in the smart side. Alright, we're good there. 
the first mishap of the series. <laughs> but it did force us to kind of redo the ship a little bit. Now we have a nice little compact space in front. Not as comfortable as it used to be. And we are not airtight because of this. And now we have not enough small steel tubes. Great. Where am I going to get small steel tubes? Uh, aside from this door here. <laughs> no small steel tubes there. Alright, so the door is the only one that has small steel tubes. And we need how much? We don't have that many. Uh, we don't have steel plates either. That's not good. We probably could head over there to the unknown signal to get it, but we don't even have time to get it at this point. So, we're going to run around here with an open window for now. And I realized I didn't even mark where these bases were. So, let's fly back to MTMK. GPS marker it. Right, with thrusters on, it looks like we have 25 minutes left, 19 minutes left on this ship. So that's not a good sign, obviously. So, hmm, we might have to get a hydrogen tank. So then we can run the hydrogen engine without any issues. Or get some solar panels up and running. I think that would probably be the best bet. Alright, so we're just going to park ourselves here. And this is a really, really cramped space. <laughs> mm. And it's hard to get around here to the back, which we don't really need to get to the back anyway, so we should be okay. All right, let's get into this economy base. Ooh, there's a freight here with nothing. Okay. That's a mags. That's good. Here's a... Here's a bit of a lazy NPC. Oop, did I just kick him off? Yes, I did. And he's running around with weapons. <laughs> That's a wandering merchant. All right, I wonder if we could just get into that. So we'll, we'll take a look in a second. Oop, this place is like crawling with these NPCs. Let me kick him out and see what happens. Oh, they got a jetpack and everything too. And, and they're armed. <laughs> Oop, oh, sorry. Didn't mean to see you there. Um, let's get in here. All right, so here's a store. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Like I said, the MK is for this. We can buy the data pads. We'll just buy them all. It's only five. That's not too bad. We have enough for a elite welder. We really, really, really want to go that route. Um, but we only got about two hundred thousand funds. I mean, we could go with the proficient one instead because it's a little cheaper. So we don't blow all our cash. I'm just going to buy that first. And selling. We got not much to sell. I mean this will give us. A decent chunk of money right here. We sold all the construction components. But we can't even buy any. So I'm not going to sell. If I can't purchase. Those type of things. I mean what I can do. Is probably buy the cheapest. Ship we can find and dismantle it for parts. That's a possibility. I mean, that's probably not even worth it to do something like that. But here's like 801 or so. So it's going to take us a little bit of time to get those. And wow, 40,000 for the space pod? That's interesting. Well, 40 million, I should say. Can I just sell my ship instead? <laughs> Um, doesn't look like it. All right. So we're going to swap out that welder. So at least we got that. A little bit of progression right there. And where's the wandering merchant? I kind of want to 
get to the wanting merchant if I can. So, bunch of search contracts we could do here. Let's see, search one, two, three, four, five. That is not too bad. I wish I could do it now. I mean, I, I can. But I want to capture, not capture, go to the wanting merchant really quick to see what that's all about. We're about a kilometer away, a kilometer point and a half. So I'm going to see if I can match speed with it. So I don't crash into it. <laughs> like I do with everything else. Whoa, that was close. That was really, really close. I think. Hard to tell because I'm only in first person view, but whew, that was a little bit rough. Oh, it's got turrets and everything. So if I really wanted to, I can go rogue on them. <laughs> Should I do that? Probably not. Can I do it? Absolutely. <laughs> so it's got a turret, so we could easily take out turret, easily take out the missile launcher, and that's decent parts right there. Um, is there an entrance to the ship? Probably not. Oh, there's a cockpit here, and with actually an NPC in there. So that's actually pretty interesting. <laughs> so again, oh, it's a store. Ah, there we go. So then we could buy small steel tubes right now if we want to. It's a little expensive, but we could buy it to fix our front if we need to. Selling, not very worth it, as you see here. But at least we could buy some parts. All right, so let's do that. Where's our ship? Um, Our ship did not follow, did it? Oh, no, it did. Okay. Got a little worried right there. <laughs> okay, so this thing needs... Oof, that's a lot. Um, eight small steel tubes. Eight small steel tubes is going to probably cost us a good chunk of money. So this is an interesting traveling merchant here. So... Ah, that's not too bad. We're going to buy eight of those. Do we need anything else? I mean, we could probably slap on a solar cell. Or a solar panel. Uh, I should say solar panel. This one costs 32 solar panels. We need all the other stuff. This one, same thing, 32. So we got to worry more about 32 solar cells. So 32 solar cells will cost us 24. All right, we could do that. Um, What else did we need? We also needed steel plates and these things. We don't have steel plates to buy, so that's out of the picture. Did we need? I think we needed girdles too. Girdles, girders. <laughs> Back to the old ways of saying that. Um, twelve girders. I think we have twelve girders in base, but let's just buy twelve just in case. So that's not too bad. Um, and that's about it. So, we can't really sell much, I don't believe. I don't even think we have much to sell in our base. Our base? Our ship. <laughs> Let's see. Luckily, we did do that because we didn't have too many. All right, we don't have not much to sell anyways. So, we'll leave it as that. Okay. So, you can go. You're free to go. You know what? It's stationary. It's not even moving. <laughs> so, yeah. I wonder if I put a merge block here. Can I merge into it? It probably can't because it's not it's not friendly or anything like that. It's just neutral. <laughs> okay, so back to it. Let's just close this up. And then that should give us the privacy that we need or pressurization. Nope, that didn't pressurize it. Okay, let's let's um, not worry about that right now then. <laughs> Unless it's on um, depressurize, but it should be blue if that's the case. And we're not airtight. Oh, well. Okay. 
Um, and it may be right here. That's why it's not airtight, too. That's fine. All right. So we could slap on some solar panels. I should have checked these. These take 16. So it's half of the amounts that we we would normally need for a full one, I think, right? 32. Yeah, half. That's not that bad. All right. So we can slap on these with style then. <laughs> So we could do that, like pretty much like this. Yeah, we could do that. All right. So we need steel plates. So that's gonna be a problem. Um, let's strip this. And we can strip this. And this. And then we can throw in. Hmm. Not exactly where I wanted it, but it will do. And we're missing computers for some reason, but I think we have that. Uh, let's take these out. So this is also turning into a little bit of um ship evolution <laughs> in a way. All right, so we're going to put this against there. And we're good. So we just need computers. So we just grab our computers from here. We have a lot of it, so that's good. Okay, so hopefully this gives us a little bit of power that we need as we're traveling. It's probably not going to be much at all, but hopefully, hopefully it covers a bit of it from there. All right, so we're going to toss everything in here for now. Close that up and see where pressurized we are. Okay, good. So we're just going to depressurize ourselves there for no reason whatsoever. But <laughs> um, yeah, depressure on and off. Okay, so traveling merchants, thank you for your service. Just want to double check. Do you have anything else for sale at the moment? Are you saying something to me? What was that? And no, that should be about it. Do we want to buy more solar cells? Just in case. Um, I feel like we should. So let's just buy another 32 um, girders. I think it was 12. And we should be okay. Do we want to buy more power? Do we want to buy power cell? Now we need 80 when it comes to making it uh, a battery. So maybe we don't worry about that right now. Mm, yeah, I don't think we should worry too much about that now. I'm going to buy 30 small steel tubes just in case. We just carry it around for now. Um, do we have anything to sell? I don't think so. Okay. All right. We're good here um will you stay here i don't know uh i put a question mark just in case <laughs> okay we should be good there um either we go to unknown signal or go back to doing some search contracts for some cash or actually you know what we have oops. all right so this is this is the rough part i need to get to the other side <laughs> And getting to the other side is a little bit of a pain right now. So we need to open it up somehow um, over here. But give me my data pads for now. And we'll see how far these GPS markers really are. Okay, GPS. And okay, that's super far. This is the mod as well. This is the GPS distance helper. That's too far, too far. And that's super far as well. And I don't know what this is. This is pasted from clipboard. Uh, why is the GPS not helping there? Or the GPS helper not helping there, I should say. There you go. Nope, they're super far. The closest one is 5,800. <laughs> so that's a no-go. All right. That's fine. 
Okay, in terms of getting around, maybe we flatten this out. Um, if we flatten it out, no, we should be fine to do that. All right, let's do that. We're gonna open this up, and it looks like we should be able to do it because there's a catwalk panel here. Yeah, we can do this. Um, I think this whole thing's gonna fall apart if I didn't put a placement placement over there. Ooh, that's not gonna help. We'll put it there for now. So that we can get rid of, and we'll put that over here. Let's close that out. So that should hold that. And we could just do either a panel or just half block the whole thing. So actually no, half block wouldn't really work like that. Uh Mm, we could do that. That's fine. All right, so something. Once again, it's not letting me build, which is kind of weird. Shouldn't, got, shouldn't have gotten rid of that before. So, we have, I think we just put a panel right here instead. And there we go. So that kind of covers that up. This, um... Let's switch this out. We'll do this. We actually use a lo little less steel plates. This thing looks ridiculous. Alright. Now we have an opening to get back here. We need to. And we have two doors for no reason. But we should also be airtight. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So our trading wandering merchant. I think he's stationary. He's not going anywhere. So that's a good sign. Let's head to... Oop. Oop. What am I doing? Let's head to the unmarked beacon, the UNMK beacon. Let's explore what's there. Well, we actually been there. Let's get back there. Let's just say, and maybe pick up some more search contracts and call it from there. So this has been a pretty decent adventure so far. And I guess because my threat level is fairly low. And when I say that we're in combat phase now, <laughs> And that's actually from the MEC, I believe. Um, and then that means they're going to spawn some really hectic stuff. But again, my threat level, as I was saying, is quite low. So I don't think anything crazy is going to happen anytime soon until I start getting like um, turrets, weapons, missiles, things like that. So, so I shouldn't worry too much. But we definitely need to find an economy base with components to sell and buy otherwise i'm gonna have to go really really drastic and start grinding down the trade merchant oh the trade merchant moves when you're not around okay that's interesting so here's another trade merchant actually so kind of curious the trade merchant that i went to was this one right here which moved a bit and there's one here that's five kilometers away so, do I go to that? Or do I go to the unknown signal that's right over here as well? So, I need to space myself a little bit when I'm getting closer to these things. So that I don't run into it and break the whole entire window like I did before. Feels a little awkward that I'm like super, super close to the window. <laughs> I'm like pretty much pushed up against it. All right, that's a few meters away, so we can just go outside and get it. 
I got 10 seconds to 8 seconds now to just push the button before it blows up in my face. As I was saying. <laughs> okay, not having a good day. Ooh. Not having a good day. Almost ran to my own ship just now, too. So, fun stuff. All right. Where's my wandering merchant? That was super, super close to... Is this one I want to go to. That one was the one that I really went to. Already went to and he flew away, I think. Okay, so let's get to this one. And I can't believe I docked my own ship. Can't believe the unknown signal blew up in my face also. But... <laughs> We're getting somewhere. For sure. Okay, I'm trying to match speed with it so I don't crash into it terribly. Hey, stop right there. Stop right there. I'm here to buy stuff. Hello? Ooh, come on, come on, come on, come on. No, 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 not this again. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> don't know why I can't match speed with it. What's going on? Huh, that's interesting. Did I somehow... Yeah, okay, I had to get out of the, the helm first in order for that to work. Oh, right, he's got an artillery. <laughs> Yikes. And your store is right here. All right. Thanks for waiting up on me. Just want to say hi. How's it going? Yeah, we could definitely grab this for parts. If we want to. <laughs> that right there is an assembler, basically. Alright, what do you have for sale? Nothing we can use in particular. So that's a bit of a waste of time. <laughs> How much did I buy the solar cells for? I think a lot less, a lot more than that. But that's not worth selling. But if they both were stationary, I could have just sold from this trader to that trader for no apparent reason. And it could have worked out too. <laughs> okay, so instead of GPS markering these specific bases, I put it a marker in between the two. So I could just go there and find both bases at a given time. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to now head back to UNMK. We get about these wandering merchants because not much to sell there. Um, we could get rid of these as well. We can actually. Let's put it in the helm. If we can. The helm doesn't have any space. Okay. Never mind. Very, very tempted to dismantle the wandering merchant if we can. I don't even know if we can or not. I hope we could if we get desperate, but I think we should be. Okay, for now, we, we're definitely going to get in the desperate areas too, because we got very minimal power left too. So we are going to need the power of the sun to kind of soak up and recharge ourselves a bit. All right, we'll stay here and try to get the sun on us. On us. What happened to my solar panel? <laughs> Did I end up breaking it? Did I not have it attached to the ship somehow and it fell out because it was attached to this thing and not that thing? Is that what happened? If that is what happened, <laughs> ouch. <laughs> what a waste of some solar panels. Or solar cells. Jeez, everything's just going wrong today. All right, you, you, you robots are a little bit scary. <laughs> All right. So what we're gonna do then is we don't have a lot. We're gonna buy all these again. You're too bad I can't sell the data pads. I really don't want the data pads. Um, there's some displays here for for selling. That's not purchasing. Yikes. All right. Yeah, this is too expensive. Jeez. All right. Nothing to do there. And let's go to contracts. So I'm going to do search contracts. 
Yeah, we're gonna just, just do the search contracts and guess what? We're gonna accept everything. Acquisitions. Yeah, we can't do any of that, so we're not gonna bother. Alright, so let's head to the ship. And I did realize just now that I forgot to add in a very important mod, which was the sleep drink eat repeat mod, which was more of a nuisance than anything else. Um Should I add it? Man. Nah. I'm okay without it, <laughs> to be honest. So I might just not add it. I don't know. It wasn't a very important mod. It would be a bit more of a struggle, but um, I would just buy drinks from the vending machine. Eating, I would probably buy also from the station. I don't know. I mean, it, it, it makes sense to do it. It makes a good struggle, but I already started this adventure without it. So probably not going to end up adding it. And if I do add it, it'll be easier down the line anyways. It probably would have been a big struggle in the beginning. But right now, if I were to add it now, it's, it wouldn't be too, too hard, to be honest. Right here's the first one probably gonna be found, and of course we can do this the smart way and slow down a lot. Guess we get a lot closer. I do wonder, can I? Uh, where did it go? <laughs> it's right in front of us. Okay, can I do this? Grind it down before it leaves. You could, but it kills the reputation a bit. <laughs> Was that worth it? No. So, that wasn't that great. We lost a lot of uh, rep with that. Ouch. Did not have done that. Uh, or. Just stop the moment I saw negatives. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, we'll recover all... All the rep in a bit anyways. Alright, I'm going to get to the furthest point here. And then we'll come back to the 13s, 20s, and everything like that. We should... We should be okay. And there's a UNMK station 131 kilometers away. Which, again, is a ship selling base. Which is not useful to us currently um was that worth doing no because we didn't even get much out of it if we were to get a small reactor out of it that would have been better but that was definitely not worth it and it cost us quite a bit to do All right, so unfortunately this one's a little spaced out more than I like. The other, the first run we did was actually pretty good. Everything's kind of clumped together. Now we're going from four kilometers to 20 kilometers away. So that's, ugh, that's a bit rough. And of course, again, we run into <laughs> these ships. Uh, it's a little hard to not run into them. Uh, did I break anything? Didn't seem like I did. I am kind of curious to see why this was not here or wasn't why it wasn't built. So I think this is what was preventing me from building before. So that's not a good sign, obviously, because we just wasted mats by having it kind of disappear on us. <laughs> but this is here and we built that there yikes so yeah it was it was definitely that um that is not a good sign whatsoever so i lost some solar cells just from that we could just build it this way or this way 
what do we want to do can we do it this way yeah we can do it this way i'm kind of inclined to do it that way all right so here's our new solar panels i mean it's changing its shape <laughs> a little bit in the ship so ain't too too bad all right i should have started driving and go to my destination that would have been a little bit smarter <laughs> it's all right we should still have a little bit more time so we should be okay so we got 217 space credits again so that's not too bad and and we started with only 10 so i mean we're doing eco only right now in, a, in an essence but soon enough once we do find another economy base and i'm hoping very soon we should be able to get more parts and materials to start building like an assembler, refinery, and things like that. But that does require us to change the whole entire ship out a little bit. So, um, yeah, it's going to take a little bit of time, to be honest. Do you need a sun? I don't even know where the sun is. The sun's there, so let's flip it this way. So that our solar panels are getting something at least. I think eventually we should get enough for a hydrogen tank, at least a small one. Mm, somewhat feasible, except for the large steel tube. This this large steel tube probably gonna cost us a little bit. Uh, and the reason why I say it's somewhat feasible is we could probably buy those eventually with a, a little bit of cost, but the biggest problem is we also need a connector because i want to connect into economy base and load up some hydrogen or at least the eco base that sells the hydrogen so that's going to fill up our tanks so that would be the smart way of getting energy because then we can use our hydrogen engine to power up the ship a bit more because they don't sell ice from what we found out in previous times so this thing has been found. See you later. We got two more to go. And it's been a long session. So we're likely going to call it once we finish getting the other one. But we are climbing up our numbers here. So, I mean, once we do a few more, we might actually be have enough to buy a ship. And like I said, I probably will just dismantle it, if anything, just to get parts. Um, if I have to. I mean, otherwise, I'm going to have to float in space for quite some time to look for an economy base that sells components or accepts components or buys components, I should say. So that's going to be a bit later down the road, I think. I'm going to keep rolling the dices with the data pads and hope for the best that we find something close by. I mean, we could circle around the moon a little bit just to see if there's any others. I don't plan to land on the moon if it's on the surface because then that's going to be more or less surviving on the moon and I really want to do surviving space. I'm trying my best not to land on a planet if I don't have to. I do wonder how hectic it's going to get once I start having weapons or having a higher threat level. <laughs> right now it's fine, I think. I haven't really gotten to too much trouble just yet. Do I know... On planets, there's um, planet inst installations like surf, like bases and things like that. I wonder in space, would there be bases? Uh, probably not, right? It'd be nice to have like an asteroid base or something like that to kind of um, get to and scrap up if anything, just for materials. But this is truly, truly surviving as a trader because in the previous season, surviving Mars, we were able to get a lot of materials by going to a base, an abandoned base or abandoned settlement, scrapping it, selling it in that way to get what we need. But in this case, I don't think we're going to run into any abandoned settlements because <laughs> we're in space. So that's the challenge, really. All right, we are now getting this one, which that's more than enough to get it. <laughs> and we almost skinned it a bit. And more or less, 
to should I just put the third person view? I mean, I'm doing okay with first person view. Mine is the little mishap we had with our front of the ship. <laughs> but it doesn't make for a nice time lapse when it comes to driving around like we are now to like different um locations. So I don't know. I might put it back on only for time lapse reasons and not use it while I'm moving around. But I'm so used to pressing the key that even though I can't do it now, I still press it very often. Um but we get nowhere from it. So mm, oh you know what I should no that was buying right yeah, I think so. Because if there was displays, I would have just bought two displays and made the other cockpit. Although, our current ship design ain't that bad, to be honest. So, maybe we just keep it this way. <laughs> okay, am I experiencing some kind of glitch here? Which I've ran into at one point in the surface so i am right next to this marker here as you see and i'm not getting the bit of a pop-up of where this ship is is it something is it just like an unknown unknown like too bad this is exactly what happens <laughs> i don't know but I don't see the ship anywhere. And that is the waypoint right there too. So that's a definite loss of reputation. Not as much as I did when scrapping the ship when I should have stopped. <laughs> um, but that's a lot of money that we are losing out. So it's only a 750 meter deviation. But I'm not going to be able to find it. It looks like. So I flew towards it, so something should have popped up on my radar, but nothing did. So that's a stinker. Not much we could do about that. Um, shoot. Oh, wait. There it is. How did it end up behind us? Huh? That was interesting. All right. So we're just going to slowly approach it. <laughs> That was really odd. I don't know how it just got right behind us. Look how close we can get on this. Just nudge it for fun. <laughs> I hope you jump back home right. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I thought I got it stuck to the point where it wasn't able to fly away. And luckily it was able to do that. Okay. We're going to head back to the UNMK Beacon. And I think we'll call it a day from now. It's a long session. And luckily, my cough's decided. So it's not too bad. In terms of editing. Because <laughs> otherwise, I would have to edit out millions of coughing. But yeah, not too bad. So we had a fairly successful run where we're still alive. So we're doing okay. <laughs> um, we haven't had a lot of luck really in terms of purchasing items because we we somehow ran into buying ship eco bases for whatever reasons and i mean we have a bit of material and that's just scrapping our own ship a bit and redesigning it forcefully in, in this case because i did run into that ship and broke my home front entire front so we now have more parts so we can update it a little bit yeah ship is doing okay i guess bit of modifications <laughs> yeah. and yeah I, I really want to push this window back out a little bit because it's a little bit too close for my liking can't really see much from left to right but I mean it wasn't too too bad all right we're running into the problem of not having a lot of power left so 10 minutes eight minutes when we're going forward um definitely not a good sign so that's going to be a problem quite soon. All right, combat phase has ended. Oof. And once combat phase has ended, 
we got some things flying close to us. Um, I hope they're not here to attack me. But if they are, I'm in the safety bubble. So too bad <laughs> in this case. All right. We need to put a connector on this thing. Although a connector that is not connected to anything will be fine as well. I'm just wasting off at this point. Turn that on. So a connector, it could be... Oh, I can't put it right here. I mean, we could outside of it. Best part would probably be in here i think yeah like i could just scrap this and scrap this and put a connector here and then just land there which wouldn't be too bad but a connector is quite pricey oof in steel plate that's pretty much is that the cost of an assembler basic assembler i should say <laughs> yeah basically that's that's not great all right, so what we really should do is, where's the sun? Oh, that's a bit of an eclipse right there. Um, the sun in this direction is not too bad, so that's going to soak up what we can. Let me just get down here. I wonder if we just close it. I mean, let's see. Probably a bad idea. <laughs> Will we suck up the sun when it's closed? I don't think so, right? Because it turns it off. Yeah, that doesn't work. So... It has to be on. You do dampeners off. It's stationary anyway, so that's not going to use the power. But what else can we do? I mean... Batteries are recharging. I mean, we don't need to do this because it is already recharging. Obviously. What else is there? So anything we could turn off. Ooh. When did we turn on the hydrogen engines? Um, I don't remember turning that on. That means we lost our ice. And... That's not good. Because... <laughs> we're going to run out of hydrogen. Mm hmm. Not good. All right, so that's an issue for later. I don't know when that turned on, or it just turned on. I think because I turned it on and off. Yeah. But yeah, but we are out of ice, so we do need to get a hydrogen tank somehow, relatively soon, so we can store hydrogen in there um not good but flying in space is not as bad when it comes to wasting the hydrogen so it will take some time to run out so let's just hope for the best at this point so do we need a basic assembler then assembler probably because of the metal grids but we're purchasing things anyways so i think we skip that and go straight to the assembler and that's probably the way to go um not go that way there's a lot of robots here <laughs> um all right we finished our contracts so that's not too bad we should have more search contracts to do which is too bad acquisitions we could start selling a little bit of stuff if we wanted to but we got nothing to sell anyways but the store more importantly is here um, we got more data pads for pretty expensive, but look good. We got 356,000 now. Um, yeah, so the ice is the biggest problem. So now we do need to have to find another economy base so we can refill on oxygen and hydrogen and things like that. Um, yeah, that's really, really scary at this point in time. <laughs> but uh not much we could do about it we'll we'll see how far we get because i mean we're not really flying around without jetpack anyway so i think we should be okay for the long run i hope if not it's gonna be game over and i'll be floating in space <laughs> 
So that's not good. Okay, so... DPS pointers. Ooh, uh, HS. I forget what that is, but that's only 256 kilometers away. That's not terrible. I mean, it's far, but it's not terrible. And... Nothing else relatively close by. We don't want any more MKs for sure. So, okay. So a HS. And what is the HS? Um, is it? Can we see it from here? All right. So that might look like a component base. That wouldn't be too bad to get to. And we said that's about 259. Okay, so that is probably somewhere we want to get to sooner than later, to be honest. Um, where are the beds here? Is it here? Oh, wow. We can get... Oh, no, this is the beds. All right, there's somebody in the toilet and people sitting here. So that's a little creepy. <laughs> But I'm here to steal the loose change that's left here. <laughs> um, yeah, you need a door. <laughs> All right, so that should be it for now. We'll have to figure out some solutions for our problems relatively soon. But we do need to head over to another economy base for sure. Just to see what they sell. Because one, we need hydrogen. And two, we need components. So we're going to float our way towards that station. The CVHS, which, oof. Is that in the planet? If it's in the planet, then it's going to be a problem. Um, Either way, we should get going because of that. Oh, no, that's gone. <laughs> I was about to say that encounter is coming closer, but it's not. All right, so we could save power by getting to the sun, wherever that is. Yeah, it's right there. Uh, follow the sun's rotation to power up our sails. And we're just going to float this way. So we got eight minutes left to go forward. But that's fairly superficial. We can turn off dampeners and just float on by to the next station. If we get desperate, we'll turn on the hydrogen engine. But we need to find a way to build the hydrogen tank. A small one shouldn't be too bad, but again, we need large steel too. So we can start putting one down now, I think. Maybe not. Oh, no, we can't because of the panels over here. We would have to do it from the outside, I think. Mm, not a lot of space to do this. And especially that we need a connector, too. Uh, the connector could be here to the O2H2. And yeah. Where can we put this one? <laughs> I mean, we could put it up like this, but that looks ridiculous. We, we could do this, but we also then require a conveyor tube or a conveyor junction or something like that. We would need something like this. Do that, which I don't even know if we have the parts for that. Um, Looks like we do. That's not too bad. All right, so then we need to put the hydrogen here if we can. So we'll leave this here until we run into hopefully like a wandering or something like that. Then we could definitely draw out a little bit more materials to finish that off. And then we need to also get materials for a connector, which is another problem. And then that way we can connect into the economy base and fill up hydrogen. Fill up hydrogen here, then we can fill up our own bottles, although we haven't even used it yet, so that's not too bad. And the we still have some reserve power in here too in terms of hydrogen so once again that's not too bad but eventually we'll we will run out of 
hydrogen, so that's not a good sign. But we're floating in the ship more than not, right? So we shouldn't run out anytime soon, hopefully. But yeah, I'm going to call it for now. For the next episode, we're probably going to end up starting in DVHS station, hopefully, if it's not in the planet. Um, and then from there, we're getting kind of decide where we go from there in terms of buying selling and things like that so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this episode episode one season two of surviving as a trader but this time we're gonna do it in space with of loads and loads of npc so if you enjoyed this episode hit that like button don't forget to subscribe and of course drop a comment down below and of course see you guys next time bye